It's time for week number seven in the National Football League, and we are here to kick it off here on Cowboys Insider inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Nate Newton, Rick Goslin, and Daryl Johnson as the Cowboys come off their bye week knowing they have Zeke Elliott not only this week but also next week. They take on the San Francisco 49ers out on the West Coast on Sunday. But before we get our opening statements from these three guys, what a bye weekend it was for the graduate of Syracuse <laughs> University. A Syracuse knocked off Clemson on Friday night. That made the bye week very special. It was unbelievable. Phone blew up on Friday night. Thank you for that. <laughs> brought, oh, back, brought back memories of the orange, who were the orange men from 30 years ago. when Daryl <laughs> helped revive the program there. But the Cowboys trying to revive this season after a 2-3 and three start coming out of the bye. And they've got a tough one this weekend. I know this is an 0-16, but they're close to the first team in the history of the league to lose five consecutive games by three points or less so you've got a tough schedule coming up Chiefs Redskins Eagles uh, Falcons and here's an 0 and 6 team in that group don't look past these San Francisco 49ers what these guys have to do like Jimmy used to tell us most you know take care of your business go play sound defense good special teams no penalties and definitely no turnovers and you should walk out of there with a win play hard play smart not only are they winless they're going to start a rookie quarterback making his NFL starting debut against Cowboys CJ Beathard uh, grandson of Bobby Bethard. And uh, last time the Cowboys played a rookie quarterback starting debut, Vince Young. Ah, leave it to Goose to know that right off the bat here. <laughs> we'll get into the 49ers coming up in a little bit, but let's get into uh, the Zeke Elliott situation a little bit right off the start here. And I want to I want to ask you, Daryl, just, uh, just off the top, what kind of impact does this have on a team when you don't know from week to week whether you're going to have your star running back or not? I think it's got to be tough for the guys in the locker room because it keeps going back and forth. He's in the lineup. He's out of the lineup. He's going to be suspended. It's, it's overturned. So I think it's hard for them to have that consistency. We were without Emmett at the start of the season one year for two games because it was a contract holdout. Now, we didn't know how long it was going to be, but that was within our control. All we, all yeah. we had to do is have Mr. Jones step up and say, <laughs> okay, this is over. We're going to pay him and get him back in here. So this is completely different. You know, uh, they got the right guy in Jason Garrett, though, because he's the type of guy that's going to preach one game, one play, this, that, and other. So whoever they're preparing, he's going to have them believing that the next man up. But it, it's no replacing Zeke. Zeke is what he is, and we need him for every – Every play we can get out of him. And I mean, working, man, we got to work this kid. But it shouldn't impact it because, as we know, it's a one week at a time league. Everybody's focused on the next game. Zeke is there the next game. You worry about next week, next week. You know, and the, the other thing, when you look back at the last time the Cowboys took the field, that last offensive drive they had, you could see the persistence in the run game. Can you see now that that run game is starting to come together a little bit with, of course, Zeke carrying the load? The longer they play together, the better they'll be. Uh, it's one of those things in the running game. You get better at it. We've talked about preseason, not enough time for the offensive lines to gel, which means also the running back with that offensive line to gel. Where are the good matchups? How are they playing leverage? So I think they get better and better. So that's why it's, it's, it's important to get some resolution on this topic. Yeah, and definitely and know who your left guard is. Just go with one guy, ride with it, and let's see how it fits. All right, uh, coming out of this bye week, what is it uh, that you, Rick, we'll start with you. What do, what do you want to see the Cowboys have improved on coming out of the bye week? We're Dovetailing into the last question, I want to see him run the ball. I think the identity of this team is a running football. I think the reason they won 13-3 last year is because of Zeke Elliott. They committed to run the football. That made it easier on the rookie quarterback. It made it easier on the defense. Kept them off the field. They have to run the ball. The defense isn't making plays. They've got three takeaways in the first six games of the season, that's not good enough. So run the ball, control the clock, and do what you did last year. Daryl, with the, with the new rules in place, of course, the team had a four-day weekend. Uh, they got just practiced twice last week. How much uh, is it possible to improve that much? Or, or is rest such a big thing? Uh, that that helps the team. Going. You know, I, I think at this time of year, and we had a couple of early ones. We had some week three buys, and, and what we would do is we'd look back to the start of training camp. So that week three buy, week four buy, kind of comes midpoint if you go from start of training camp to the end of the season, as opposed to start of the regular season to the end of the regular season. But the big thing is is being able to go in and self scout. And I, I don't know if the body of work is that good at this point. So it's 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 going to be interesting to see. I think the biggest thing is probably the health, right? Yeah, because Hitchens. Sean Lee, we get those guys back. We lost Paya. We had to find us a new nose guard. So a lot of things happened during this uh, break. But what they need to do, Rick, come back and find a way to stop the run. They have to stop the run. 
good health will do that. You get Sean Lee out there, you'll find a way to stop the run. It'll improve immensely. Number 50 gets out there. We're just getting started here on Cowboys Insider. We take an up-close look at those San Francisco 49ers and that rookie quarterback that Goose talked about in just a moment. Cowboys Insider, presented by Baylor Scott & White, is brought to you by Academy Sports & Outdoors, the official sporting goods retailer of the Dallas Cowboys, AT&T, mobilizing your world, and by Baylor Scott & White. We're changing health care for life. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. You're home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. Cowboys Insider continues from inside the Academy Sports and Outdoors studios. Bill Jones, Nate Newton, Rick Goslin, and Daryl Johnston. As we dive into these 0-6 San Francisco 49ers, Cowboys play there on Sunday afternoon. And once again this week, we got some real inside knowledge on the Niners because Daryl Johnston did the Niners Redskins game uh, last week. And uh, at quarterback, C.J. Beathard came into the game for Brian Hoyer midway through that game and almost led him to a come from behind win. He did. It was it was very impressive. And it was funny because we talked with uh, with Coach Shanahan on Saturday and Chris Myers, uh, my play by play guy, asked him directly, you know, with this youth movement, you know, Navarro Bowman's gone. There's a lot of talk about what Carlos Hyde's future is with you. Any thought at quarterback with Brian Hoyer, C.J. Beathard? Absolutely not. It's not Brian Hoyer's fault we're 0-5. <laughs> Boom, you know, it's 17-0. He puts him in, and it just energized not just the offense, but the defense actually ele ele elevated their plays. So he, he created a nice little spark. You know, I, I, I like this Beathard kid, man. More, more important, I like him because uh, his uh, granddad brought me into the league with the Washington Redskins <laughs> as a free agent, Bobby Beathard. But moving on, uh, after we dominate y'all come Sunday, uh, but I like the defense. Well, and uh, Bobby Beathard could be going into the Hall of Fame, uh, depending on how Goose feels about him. Yeah, I, I think about <laughs> Jeff Beathard. He, he, he played well last week, but there was no tape on him. Now the Cowboys have a little bit of tape to look at, and I think they'll be more prepared now for Beathard than the Redskins were. And I, I would think that uh, being a rookie quarterback, I would think he will struggle a little bit this week. He'll, he'll get the snaps, though. So He didn't get any snaps last week because Brian's taking all those snaps. So yeah. I, I, that, it'd be interesting to see if that's yeah. a wash. He's a tough kid. He stood in that pocket. What do you what do you see out of the 49ers in the run game with Carlos Hyde? They're still trying to figure that out a little bit. Um, you know, I don't know if it's if it's it's the transition with Kyle Shanahan trying to get his people in there. Um, but Matt Breida seems to be a guy that they lean on a little bit more. He's a little bit quicker, a little bit more dynamic. Carlos is the power runner. So it's by platoon right now. So you're going to see both of them. Uh, it's just a question of all of a sudden, does does Matt Breed assert himself as the go-to guy? But they are going up against the Cowboys' run defense, right, Nate? <laughs> uh, yeah, we definitely got to find a way. We got to we got to control the game for us. Where we put the safety and win, because they they need help up front, and we hoping that with uh, the guys back hitching and, and, and number fifty, that, that things can go well for them. Sean Lee, that is. Keep keep an eye on San Francisco tight end Greg Kittle. He was C.J. Beathard's college teammate. Yeah. And he'll be the comfort, the comfort receiver. When, it, when in doubt, he's going to go to Kittle. All right, switch it over to the defensive side. And the Niners have invested heavily in their front seven. Uh, and the Coppell Cowboys, Solomon Thomas, mm. who, was one, who was the third pick in the draft this year. He's been very impressive, has a couple of sacks, even got past Trent Williams to get to the quarterback last week. Yeah, he's, uh, he's the real deal. He's everything they expected when they drafted him in the first round. And this is a team that's committed to that defensive line. Eric Armstead will be out uh, this week. Uh, maybe a guy that really wasn't fitting into the scheme there a whole lot. But the Forrest Buckner up front, Solomon. Thomas off the edge and they could have Reuben Foster back. Reuben Ooh. Foster was a guy who did not play last week and he was close to getting in so I wouldn't be surprised if he's out there this weekend. You can't get behind the chains. They, they, they too athletic. They, they run. They hustle. You just can't get behind the chains on these guys. Yeah Foster's old. He, he's missed several weeks now. You get him back that's going to be they'll have a different look because now they got their run stuffer to go with the pass rushers. All right, we continue here on Cowboys Insider in a moment. We're almost to the midway part portion of this season. Who's the MVP so far? We discuss when we come back. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. You're home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage.
This segment is brought to you by DraftKings. Play for free today at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. Cowboys coming off their bye week. Go to San Francisco. Take on the Niners this weekend as we welcome you back here to Cowboys Insider inside the Academy Sports and Outdoor Studios. Just six weeks into this season, you know, in college football, they talk about who's the favorite for the Heisman Trophy back in the summertime. <laughs> We've got our own little version of it here. The MVP through six weeks of the season. Yes, it is much too early, but Vegas says Carson Wentz, the Eagles quarterback, is the odds-on favorite to be the MVP. They also list Alex Smith, Tom Brady, and Deshaun Watson, who's made the big splash early uh, with the Texans. Daryl, what are you thinking? I'm going off the board. I hope I don't, I hope I don't take your guy, Nate, because I know, I know you like him. But I'm going to go with Todd Gurley. I, I like teams oh. that, <laughs> that kind of make a pop. Like nobody was talking about the Rams coming into this season. And the big reason is Gurley. You know, you can look at the, the improvement of Jared Goff, but that doesn't happen, I don't think, without Todd Gurley. So, in my opinion, Todd Gurley's kind of elevated that team up to, you know, playoff status here. Uh, hey, wow. before we get to yours, let's talk Wentz just for a second because uh, Wentz has, has played very well. The Eagles, one of the best teams in the league right now. What, what do you think, Rick, about, about Wentz's chances this early? I think very good. I think the two most complete teams in football right now are the Chiefs and the Eagles. If, this t if they maintain, if they win the, win the East and it's in a, a major media market, uh, he's been the difference. They've given him weapons this year. They're blocking for him. Yeah, I think he's legit. I thought he was legit last year with no weapons. And you can see why Alex Smith would be second on the Well, he's, he, he's the guy I'd vote for. Uh, they're 5-1. and one. He has not turned the ball over. You know, if you don't turn the ball over, you're not beating yourselves. You win a lot of games. As a matter of fact, the Chiefs fumbled on the first play of the season, Kareem Hunt. They have not turned the ball over since. That's why they're 5-1. And, and the quarterback is not making mistakes. He's, he's making the plays that are winning games. And you know, the main thing, we all thinking the same people. Because Alex Smith was my first pick, and then Gerda was my second, and then I like Wentz. Because I, I feel like the Eagles are the most complete team in, in the East because of this guy, and they gave him some weapons, and they're not dropping the ball. They got Fletcher Cox in the yeah. middle of that defense, and they bring in heat. Yeah. And then every year, it's Brady's. Brady has to be in the mix. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, getting ready for the Bills game this weekend. The Bills are still focused on the Patriots, you know, on a weekly <laughs> right. I mean, 187 regular season wins, 20 playoff career victories, 25 career playoff victories. I mean, the defense is playing terrible, but he's got the offense at number one. And Deshaun Watson, there's going to be – I heard something interesting. A lot of personnel staffs going back in and taking a look as why yeah. we missed this kid in Kinda the draft like this year. Yeah, right. Exactly, exactly. What did we miss – with Deshaun Watson. So good to see him in the mix with all those good quarterbacks. But especially with Deshaun Watson because he played on, for two years in a row, played on college football's biggest stage against an NFL type defense in the championship <laughs> game in Alabama and beat him the second year and almost beat him the first year. That's yeah, the intangible. I mean, how can you not watch? I, I thought of all the quarterbacks coming out, he's the guy I wanted because he would it against Alabama. I mean, this, there's something, there's magic to this kid. And we saw it with Dak Prescott last year. You, 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 you look more at the tangibles, height, weight, speeds, arm strength. You don't look at what the guy brings to the huddle, brings to the, to the offense, brings to the team. And that's what uh, both Prescott and Watson have, that charisma that wins football games. All right. That is our MVP discussion through six weeks. We'll check back in in, in six weeks and see if any of those names are still in the discussion for NFL MVP. Next up, we go around the league. There is last year's MVP. What's going on with the Falcons so far this, this year? This segment was brought to you by DraftKings. Play for free today at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site. It's amazing week to week how things can change in the National Football League. So we welcome you back here to Cowboys Insider. Of course, a week ago, the Cowboys were playing the Packers, and Aaron Rodgers leads Green Bay down the field to a come-from-behind victory. And then the next week, Packers go to Minnesota, and Aaron Rodgers goes down with what is a season-ending injury, the broken collarbone surgery this past week. Uh, Daryl. You look at that hit and the Anthony Barr, there's been some discussion about was it a legal hit or was it uh, too much that Anthony Barr put on Aaron Rodgers? How do you look at it? I think it's a clean hit. And you know, he's within the two steps. He's, it's just one of those vulnerable situations. I think what these defensive players are doing now is when they know they've got a quarterback in a vulnerable situation, they're taking him to the turf. And in that situation, as soon as Aaron Rodgers extends his arm, he's going to break his collarbone. If he tucks his arm, He's probably going to separate his shoulder. So they know if I've got him and I can tip him and dump him 
onto that throwing arm, there's a chance he's going to be out of the game. I'm not saying they're doing this with an intent to hurt the quarterback, but this goes all the way back to Al Davis. You know, the quarterback must go down, and he must go down hard. Nothing impacts the game more than losing your starting quarterback. You got to hit him. I mean, when you get the opportunity, you got to hit him. You got to make him weary of, you know, of throwing that ball and, and knocking him off, off target there. So it was a clean hit, but he was smart about how he did it. It's a game of football. I firmly believe that when a quarterback decides to run, he should be treated as a running back, not as a quarterback. You know, I, I, the slide stuff, I saw a game several years ago where Steve Young faked the slide. The defense players froze, and he took off. If you are going to run the football as a quarterback, then you should be treated as a running back. So I had no problem with all that hit. Well, what this does, of course, with the NFC, a lot of people considered the Packers to be the favorite to come out of the NFC. Anybody's ball game. Daryl, you had a chance to get an up-close look at the Redskins, who will be the Cowboys' opponent next week. What do you make of the Redskins? Oh, they looked fantastic for the first 29 minutes, and then all of a sudden, you know, San Francisco goes down, and they get some points at 17-7 at half. Um, the second half, they were very up and down. When they're playing well, it's a good team. It's built very similar to Dallas and to Philadelphia. Good offensive line, good defensive front. They've got a strong secondary, but right now Josh Norman's out, Bashar Breeland's out. Monte Nicholson got hurt yesterday, so their secondary is kind of banged up a little bit right now. But this is a good team. They've, they're trying to find the production at the wide receiver uh, position, uh, but they're relying on the tight ends through that time. So I, I think Washington's legit, just needs to be more consistent. How about the Falcons? Uh, the Atlanta had a 17 0 lead on Miami and lose that game. And uh, of course, Matt Ryan was the MVP last year. He's got six interceptions, six touchdown passes this year. What's wrong with the Falcons? Well, they can't win at home. They've lost the last two weeks at home. And I think that's a, a, a league wide problem right now. Through six weeks, uh, home teams are under 500. You look at the teams like New England, Atlanta, Dallas, Oakland, uh, Detroit, they're all one and two at home. L last year, usually home teams win 57, 59% of their games during the course of the season. Home teams shouldn't be losing like they are now, and I think that's the issue. People have lost their identities at home. Couple, and a couple with losing their coach, uh, Shanahan, uh, the quarterback is not stable. Matt Ryan don't look himself. All right, and then you got the Vikings. Of course, they lose. Sam Bradford looked great the first week of the season. He gets hurt. They've gone with Case Keenum, and uh, they've been able to, to put things together. Of course, they benefited from Rodgers getting hurt and getting knocked out of last week's game, but they're sitting there four and two. Yeah, it's amazing what they're able to do. I mean, what happened a couple of seasons ago with the Teddy Bridgewater incident and then and, you know, Peterson going out, and this year it's Dalvin Cook and Sam Bradford, and they just keep plugging along. Uh, and, and that's what happens when you have a great defense. Your defense right. will keep you in games and give you an opportunity to win them. And uh, we'll see what Case Keenum does down the stretch. It's going to be an interesting team to watch uh, because they are outstanding on the defensive side. You know, what's interesting is Teddy Bridgewater's right. back. They now have three quarterbacks that can win games and throw over 300 yards. Most teams don't have much beyond <laughs> one. They've got three right now. And then a week ago, we, uh, we had a, a Panthers-Eagles game that a lot of people are thinking that they might, uh, they might uh, rematch in, in the playoffs. What do you think of Carolina? I think Christian McCaffrey has been huge for Cam Newton. I mean, he leads all NFL running backs in receptions, and he has become the dump-off guy that Newton didn't have. So now, now I think Cam has always felt, if we're going to win games, I've got to make all the plays. Now he's got some plays uh, to dump off. Even without Greg Olson, McCaffrey's become that guy, and he's taken a lot of pressure off Cam Newton, and Cam Newton is back playing like his MVP form because he has McCaffrey. And he's throwing a sharper ball now. And he's getting downfield of Big Benjamin and all of those guys, but he's throwing a sharper ball. So, and that probably due to a, to a better running game with McCaffrey. And we know how much it hurt to have Sean Lee out of the lineup here in Dallas. What is the future of Luke Keekley? Yeah. I think that's a big question mark for Carolina moving forward. Yeah, we're dealing with another concussion. We continue and wrap up Cowboys Insider with their keys to the Cowboys victory in just a moment. Cowboys Insider, presented by Baylor Scott and White, was brought to you by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Ricos, make every game a home game with Ricos. Baylor Scott and White, it's easy to find the right doctor right now at BaylorScottandWhite.com. And by NFL Game Pass, you'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full access to coaches' films and game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. Subscribe at DallasCowboys.com slash Game Pass. Cowboys can't take anybody lightly at two and three and not even the 0 and six of 49ers who have lost their last five games by a total of 13 points. A key to a Cowboys victory, Darrell. 
I think the passing game is going to have to come alive. This is a very good San Francisco front. It's going to be tough to run the football, even with Ezekiel in the lineup and that offensive line uh, improving. What I saw against Washington was the underneath intermediate passing routes. Washington struggled when they tried to go vertical. So if Dallas can take advantage of that intermediate short passing game in Washington, which is one of the better screen teams in the NFL, but they really hurt him with screen well, with some screen plays on the outside of Chris Thompson. Ten I seconds. Just, I just really believe they got to uh, stop the run game and make Bethard beat him. Let's see the young guy, the young quarterback. Make him beat you if, if that's how you're going to lose the game. Takeaways. You're playing a rookie quarterback. It's time to start turning the ball over. Three takeaways to five games. Not good enough. All right. That does it for Cowboys Insider. For Daryl, Rick, and Nate, I'm Bill, and we will see you next week right here on Cowboys Insider.